Good day, my lovely listeners. You are listening to the Forty Orty Podcast. Tune in every week to explore inspiring stories and insightful information that dive headfirst into the world of autism and mental health. With all those tantalizing tongue twisters out of the way, let's get into the show. Hello, listeners. You are listening to the Forty Orty Podcast. My name's Thomas Henley from the Asperger's Growth YouTube channel. And I just want to say, how are you doing today? <laughs> uh, today, we've got something um, a little bit different than usual. We're going to talk about a subject that's a little bit different, something that I don't think is talked about a lot. And that is autism and creativity. Yes, anything from making media type things to drawing to painting to making music, all that good stuff. Why is it that we have so many autistic people who are good at creative things when it seems to go against the grain? Well, today I am joined by Ina from Super Spectrum Girl. Ina, say hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. And where are you joining us from? I am from Switzerland. So it's pretty much uh, the central part where there's a lot of cows and people speak German. <laughs> they speak German? Yeah, they speak Swiss German. Ah, so, so is, is German similar to, to Swiss German? I've never heard of that. I thought it would just be Swiss. Yeah, it is kind of like a dialect. Um, it sounds totally different than German. It's a lot more like harsh and um, has a lot of like and sh and rrr. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas uh, German is a lot more softer when you hear it. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I've, I've learned something new already. Uh, what we, yeah, we're going to be talking about creativity today. Um, do you want to give everyone a little bit of an introduction to yourself? just to um, get things going? Sure. So um, I am from Switzerland. I'm 30 years old. I was diagnosed like three years ago and um, I do illustrations on the interwebs. So I have an um, Instagram account called Super Spectrum Girl where I'm trying to post on a regular basis about what it's like to be on a spectrum as a female. Mm -hmm. And what, you know, how, how did you come across like this kind of work? Like what, what got you into it in the first place? So you mean like why I got um, on the internet with um, the illustrations or just? Yeah. Why have you, why have you made illustrations and why is it centered around autism? So when I originally um, was doing some research about, um, you know, the spectrum and uh, what it's like to be diagnosed as a female. I um, was working with some kids, two girls, um, and I was doing the research to be you know, more informed about how to interact with them and how to really make sure that their needs are met in my work. And then I realized, you know, during that research that there were a lot of similarities between the things I was reading and also my life and so i just um, wanted to create something that um, shows you know what it is like to be um, autistic but also female and how um, you know you cope with daily life being on the spectrum but also being like female mm -hmm. and um, i really wanted to talk to others and how you know learn about how other individuals are experiencing this like crazy thing called autism <laughs> and so i um since i really love you know illustrating also cartoons i just like thought hey i'm gonna post something on instagram and then it kind of was growing slowly people were talking to me and i really enjoyed the interactions with everyone so i kept on illustrating and posting and yeah so when were you diagnosed with 
Um, I'm guessing Asperger's at the time, or is it sort of an autism spectrum disorder? It was pretty much, you know, the same, um, because in Switzerland, everything is kind of slower than the the rest of the world. So I got diagnosed um, like three years ago at the age of 27. And Welcome to the team. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> really <laughs> glad to be part of the team. And um, yeah, I uh, was talking to a psychiatrist and a team of um, specialists. And then they told me like that, you know, pretty much have Asper- Asperger's, but they don't call it that way anymore. So I got diagnosed being like a high functioning autistic uh, person. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I use the terms pretty much, you know, the same. So, but I guess um, people are um, talking more about the spectrum than Asperger's anymore. Um, more, yeah. Yeah, because I, I do remember that um, uh, when, so the, the diagnostic manual five i think was the introduction of asd into the into the psych business if you can say it like that and they got rid of sort of autism classifications and got rid of asperger's and pdd nos and all of those types of things they they seem to clump it together into levels and i think they use those levels to figure out what kind of support they need which I think I d- I'm, I'm still not sure how I feel about it because maybe in medical ways that makes sense, but we we already have like an idea of what Asperger's is and what autism is. Obviously, there are you know cases where the the lines are a bit blurred, but I think having those terms dif- differentiated are, are quite important to some degree. But I know a lot of people don't agree, and a lot of people find these um, functioning. I think they call it functioning labels difficult or problematic but I'm not too sure about it mm-hmm. yeah same here I guess it's really worth worth talking about it especially hearing from autistic individuals like how they feel about it because you know usually we get a label that isn't made from someone on the spectrum and I wouldn't call myself like high functioning because it really like takes away all the other other struggles that we have. I'm not just functioning in a society. I'm a living being with not, you know, a disorder, mm-hmm. but more of like a condition, which is just part of me and who I am. So it like pushes the high functioning label sort of pushes aside any any sort of struggles that you have into most people. Well, I guess so. I mean, it doesn't really show, you know, like the whole picture uh, what it's like to be um, autistic and on the spectrum. Cool. So let's let's talk a little bit about your creative arts. What is your relationship with it? How did you start? How did you get better? And why? Why did you start doing it? <laughs> did I get better? I I really have no idea. So I guess it's just you know. Um, an outlet for me it really helps me to recharge and just shut off um, the mind and just be present in the moment and um, I've always been you know this weird little awkward kid with the big glasses drawing somewhere in the corner and um, it has always been a part of my life um, drawing and you sounded like a cool kid <laughs> oh I I really wasn't the cool kid <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, so I always um, found, you know, this safe space in art. And when I went to high school, um, I really enjoyed, you know, learning about different artists and like the history of art and stuff like that. So, And did you say that you did your degree on, was it philosophy? Um, no, my degree, you know, in high school, you mean? Um, my major was biology and chemistry. Uh, I was really into science, but also really into art. Mm. And then I decided to go a totally different route. So I didn't study um, arts or illustration um, and also didn't study biology and chemistry. Um, so I studied ethics and theology. 
because uh, at the time okay. I was like really this philosopher kid really wanted to talk about the big questions like mm -hmm. uh, what is the meaning of all this and stuff so then I you know decided to study ethics and theology that's right re it's really interesting that you say that because I have um in my time scouring research papers on autism um there was one particular one that I picked up on and it was it was talking about philosophy and and autism and it seems that for some reason or another autistic people tend to have a lot of sort of insight into meaning behind things like we're, we're more drawn well not everybody obviously but some a select few of us are very drawn to that sort of area and i think over the over the course of my life i've had many sort of encounters with philosophy in general and it's it i was basically going through many many <laughs> existential crises um throughout my life since about 14 to 22 um and i was looking into reasons for things and i was trying to figure out what what was the most concrete because I, I I struggle to to function when I don't have anything concrete, so I needed to find something that sort of made enough sense for me to continue on. And it, yeah, I do have some very wacky philosophical beliefs because of it. But <laughs> I think um, I think do you, do you think that maybe that's that's another way of being creative? You know, getting into philosophy and thinking about deeper meanings and and all that jazz. Yeah, I think it is just like a real um, amazing gift that we have. You know, having this mind that is kind of endless is just amazing. I, I don't need a television or you know, like, like any other sort of um, uh, entertainment when you have your mind and you can go to places that are just, you know, crazy amazing. And so I, I've always, I think it, I've always enjoyed um, expanding you know, my consciousness and also just learning about other beliefs, spirituality and like different, you know, opinions. So mm -hmm. I think it's it's just wonderful to interact with people and to get to know what they think about the big questions, Cause that's like why we are here and stuff. Because that's, um, that's also something that, that widely like wildly contradicts like the stereotypical um autistic diagnosis because in general i think one another one of the criteria is being a bit more single minded and mm -hmm. not really no like i i would sort of agree with that to some extent when i was younger like i definitely didn't think enough about other people in terms of how experiencing life in their shoes just as like a natural thing. But as I got older, I developed, I developed, you have to kind of use like your higher brain to think about other people's opinions. <laughs> you have to put a lot of energy into it. Um, but that's cool that you, you, you too like to hear about other people's opinions. Cause I think it's great because you might learn something and you might agree with it. And if you don't, then you've got more, more evidence to show that the other the other side of the side of the coin is more right. So I think that's a it's a great thing to do. Art has, you know, creative things has been a part big part of your life. How did you how did you start doing it? Can you remember the the time at which you decided to get out a notepad nope God. Stumbling over more words. <laughs> get out a notepad and a pen and start scribbling and making some cool stuff hmm. that's a really good question it's really difficult for me to remember because you know when i was a kid um I, I wasn't born in switzerland my parents are originally from the balkans like ex-yugoslavia ah. and um so when i was like two and a half years old there was a big war and we had to flee the country and i guess at that time i think yeah, one of my first memories were from that time where 
you know, everyone around me was really in a hurry, really, like really um, anxious because, you know, of all the mm -hmm. circumstances. And I guess I was, at the time I was already drawing, just um, having this safe space, um, this like something like, you know, this circle around me that was a flow just state. Protected. Yeah, yeah, totally. And um, so I remember a lot of, um, you know, situations from that time, but I also remember um, already, you know, having something in my hands and drawing away. As sort of an, an outlet to help you express your feelings about something. Yeah, I, I mean, it wasn't a conscious thing. I guess there were just like, there was just like paper and pens. And as a kid, you just gravitate towards the things that interest you. And um, I, my parents didn't really like force me to draw or anything like that. So I guess it was, you know, uh, my own motivation to wrap these things and to do something with them. So you said that you focus on things that you're interested in and you draw things that you're interested in. Is um, Super Spectrum Girl, your alter ego, superhero? <laughs> um, <laughs> is uh, Super Spectrum Girl a part of your drawing experience or is it most the kind of most things most thing that you do doesn't make any sense is it the main thing that you do or it, do you do any other kind of art in your own time or so super spectrum girl um is pretty much like a community so i started with you know creating illustrations about my experience but it uh, you know, it developed into this community thing, like people telling me about their stories and about their struggles. And so I was starting to create more illustrations about the experiences of others, which, um, you know, was such a, an honor for me to like learn about these experiences. Um, but I do a lot of um, different things. So I guess it's just one project that I have. Um, in, um, I also create illustrations for um, like small companies, but also just like families that want their like family portrait drawn. And um, aside from, you know, like the businessy kind of um, stuff of illustration, I um, love just like uh, putting color on a piece of paper, not thinking about it, just, um, Letting the creative mind flow. It really helps me to, you know, not, not always think about what should I create, like this concept of an illustration. It's just like, do whatever feels right. Don't think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, I hope that's, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it makes definitely makes sense to me because um, recently I decided to buy myself a couple of notebooks. One was, um, I, think, I think I have it here. Yeah, it says on the front of it, amazing ideas are made here or something something cheesy like that and <laughs> that's my little notes notebook to sort of think about concepts about mental health and autism and stuff but then I also have another one which is like an arty one and I've I've just found that that putting like your pen or your pencil on a piece of paper and then drawing like not thinking too much and just drawing it, you, your brain comes out with some weird stuff. Mm. It's so <laughs> it's really strange, and I I haven't seen or heard about it from other people. I know that there's a lot of you know psychedelic art and and things like that that obviously people have done while they're you know on something. Um, but I think fr from my experience, just putting a pen to paper my brain just seems to splurge out all these weird things that correlate with my mood and what I'm experiencing at the time and it's very strange very strange I'm I'm glad that you do you do you think that that sort of explains um what you were talking about well I I do agree um that you know we are like there are people telling me like I wish I was like creative as you are and I'm like you are creative. I mean, you can, you can create stuff. You're here on earth to do things and to make things with your hands and your mind. And so I think 
we all are, you know, part of this um, amazing experience where we are perceiving perceiving this world with our own eyes, with our own experiences, um, and then putting that out there in a way that really reflects like who you are as a person on this earth is such a beautiful thing. I guess it's easy to imitate someone else, but it's really diff different and difficult, maybe more difficult to express yourself in the way that you feel is, is you, mm -hmm. basically. And um, I've just been, I've actually just been uh, flicking through some of your your images and there's there's one that's particularly stood out to me is has been very I, I just love it it's great and it's um what an autistic burnout feels like for me do you know that one sort mm -hmm. of with the um spiral things and the questions coming out of it and stuff the more recent one um <clears throat> 22nd of november so probably not that recent oh, yeah yeah mm. but i really like that image it's really cool. <laughs> I just, I, I like some of the, some of the images that you make are just, just, they're strange, but in a good way, if that makes sense. <laughs> Thank you. I really like that. <laughs> in a good way, strange, like, oh, this is, this is actually something new. This is not just like someone drawing a really nice face or drawing like a really nice flower. It's just, <laughs> you're actually just, there's a, a level of deepness in it, in my attempt to not sound too cheesy. There definitely is. I really like looking at your your page. It's nice to um to see what you know how your mind takes in things and how you express what you feel and um experience and stuff. It's it's great to look at. Ah, uh, you're making me blush. But you know, the word strange really, really describes, you know, like my persona. So I... <laughs> I like the word I mean, strange. Resonate. Yeah, I love that too. It's just like, you know, being a little bit odd and yeah, yeah. But I guess, you know, when I look at my, my illustrations and I, you know, I start comparing myself to like really talented artists... You can like, you know, get a little discouraged because um, in the times of the internet and social media. Um, yeah, there's a all... massive community, isn't there? Mm. And you've got a lot of people from everywhere, some, you know, top not point not not one percent of people who have amazing genes for pan skills or mm. amazing ability to draw. Yeah, absolutely. But I think it's it's great that you know, we have, um, we're living in this time where we um, get to know about other uh, artists and what they're doing. So I really enjoy that um, there's like YouTube where you can like look up tutorials and share about, you know, what you're interested in as you are doing that. Um, so there's also, you know, a, pos a really positive side to it. So to be able to, you know, self-publish and mm -hmm. also put your stuff out there without being dependent on a, a publishing house. Yeah, so I can I can imagine that if this was if you were doing the same thing, if you were born maybe like a hundred, two hundred years ago, the only people that would really see your art would be the people in the community, like in their local community. Whereas with Instagram, you can reach anybody. You can eat a whole mm -hmm. pool of billions of people all using it. So it's, it is quite exciting as well. The fact that, you know, your stuff could be shown to so many people and um, ins inspire them and tell them a little bit about the autism experience, tell them a little bit about the inner experience. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a great thing to do or the thomas experience or the thomas I... experience yeah <laughs> i really like that what you're doing i mean it's such a great opportunity for people to tell their story and um you know i think it's great that you're creating this platform for um the autistic community to share you know just share and be part of it interact with others info dump I've heard that term. <laughs> <laughs> Monologue. 
<laughs> so just throw out some more autistic terms. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the autism side. Do you think being autistic has benefited your art? And, you know, wh why does, you know, the whole creativity thing go against the grain a little bit in terms of stereotypes? Because I know that there are some stereotypes about autism and from reading diagnostic things, it feels like sometimes a lot of people on the spectrum go against that when they, when they get older. Do you, do you feel like autism has had a beneficial effect? Well, um, you know, I've always thought, as I just uh, told like um, you before, I always thought of myself as being this strange and odd thing, uh, odd um, person, <laughs> and odd thing. <laughs> and uh, sometimes <laughs> I felt like an alien in a big room of other people. And um, getting diagnosed has really helped me to understand um, myself a lot better and to be more accepting of who I am as a person. Um, but has it benefited my life? Um, I think it has. Um, it has helped me to express myself um, in a way that feels good for me. Um, I haven't to to told a lot of people that I'm on a spectrum. A couple of my colleagues know, and but also my family members, all of them know. Because um, and my mom is also on a spectrum. My grandma as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it has helped me to, um, to be more, um, to have more courage and not to hide, you know, behind this mask of, you know, this like really extroverted person. Mm -hmm. So I think it has benefited my mental health, the diagnosis itself, but I don't know what it would like be to not be autistic. So, cause it's just the only experience that I have being on this earth in this body and this brain yeah you'd be a different person without it sure absolutely do you feel like um autism has benefited your art like do you feel like it gives you a bit of an edge in certain aspects or do you feel like in some ways it's harder what i really love about being autistic is you know this like ability to focus on a task or a topic for hours and hours without getting bored. It's just like the superpower that we have <laughs> or a lot of, of us have. And I think it's great. It, and I love, you know, being able to just draw for hours and hours and not get bored. Just like get into this drawing ship and take off and then return a couple of hours later. Um, yeah, I guess that that is really cool. And do you feel like it affects your creativity in any way? Do you feel like you take a bit of a different angle on things? Are you more likely to do some new things with art or are you more likely to express it in different ways? I'm not sure. Um, I guess, you know, being someone that experiences um, synesthesia as well, maybe because colours and also numbers they when i'm when i'm talking to people i guess i experience them in a different way because they are kind of connected with other senses so maybe i don't know hmm. i have i have have heard from um, a few autism researchers at my university that synesthesia seems to be a bit more present in autistic people i'll have to i'll have to look that up later but how how is that like <laughs> i've i've never talked to anybody <laughs> with synesthesia and it fascinates me beyond belief like tell me tell me about that <laughs> so i never thought of it, of it you know as being something like weird it just was just always you know numbers have personalities they appear in colors and i never like talked about that with someone it was just you know part of going to school and doing maths and science and stuff so um it's more like you know numbers are not just like information um it's more like they interact with each other they have personalities and 
but also colors. They are interact. They are connected with feelings, and um, yeah, it's really like difficult to explain. But it's like your senses are connected, and you experience them at the same time. So when I smell something, it comes in a color, and I. Sometimes I see patterns that are moving and it's not like this, like really trippy experience. It's just, you know, part of being, you know, Ina and being <laughs> in this world. It doesn't really bother me. It's just like part of who I am. But I guess, you know, more neuro neurotypical people don't experience that. So that's when I like realized that is something that is probably has to do with my brain being wired a little differently. Hmm. That's very interesting. I, I do, st I am struggling a little bit to think about what that would be like. Is it, is it similar to thinking about something or is it, does it actually, so if you smell something, does it actually appear like in your visual perception? Is, does it, do you see it like, or do you just see it in the back of your mind or? It's more like when you, when you're like really happy, you're not just smiling. It's your body, your whole body is experiencing this sensation of being happy. And I guess, you know, for people, or I guess at least for me, when I'm um, experiencing a color or a number, um, it like really takes, um, my whole body is experiencing. So I don't like see colors in front of my, uh, visual field it's more I experience it um, like in my mind and w with my whole being mm -hmm. it's really difficult to explain I bet I they're... understand <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but it's a really cool thing I I mean it doesn't bother me <laughs> sometimes you know when you're I'm not sure I, I don't know how you experience that when but when you're like really overwhelmed with like a lot of noise and um uh, different sensations it can be a little too much so um you know i um it's not always a you know uh, a nice feeling to i mean when someone is angry with you with you you can or, feel the red uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be red sometimes it's like a different um it's like a different pattern of um colors and yeah that's <laughs> awesome no don't be sorry like you're doing a great job of explaining it um I think it's it's sort of one of those things that you can only experience if you you can only truly appreciate if if you experience it. So do, does my voice and does does talking to me give off any sort of different colors or anything? Oh yeah. <laughs> can you can you give me a profile? Yeah, sure. Um I mean it's just the way that I perceive your voice. You have a really nice voice. So it's it's like a really soft um I would say like a grayish, uh, bluish um, kind of pattern. And um, it's really soothing. So it's really nice talking to you. Um, That's yeah. good because that is... I bet in the... person as well. Because <laughs> those are the <laughs> um, the colors that I have on my logo. So oh, that's, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, did, I absolutely didn't like have that in mind. So it's just uh, an intuitive thing. So that's good then. <laughs> I've been told by some people that blue seems to be my color, but maybe I might actually start taking that into account. Um, <laughs> I do like do like a little bit of blue. I feel like it. It's it's calm, sort of like calm, but not. Um, no, it's like calm, but not too 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 positive. Just sort of. That that would describe me, and then obviously like the little bit of grey and and stuff is more of kind of my dark way of viewing the world. And <laughs> that's so funny. I just look. I'm just looking at your logo, and I I haven't realized that you know before. I was watching your videos and listening to your podcasts, but I never really paid attention. So I I mean, <laughs> this reaction was really genuine when I said like really. <laughs> Yeah, that's so cool. Brilliant. Well, I've got a little bit of a synesthesical, synesthesi how do you say, how would you say that? Synesthesical 
profile. Oh, don't ask me. Don't ask me because you know I have like no idea how to like, <laughs> say stuff like like really in a fancy way it's, in English. So. It's definitely not a real word. <laughs> Just it's, okay. it's me trying to think of a word. Yeah. <laughs> Where there is none, but that that definitely should be a thing. You should um start selling your uh sinus sinus physical <laughs> profiles. Can make a bag, make a boatload. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, in terms of the diagnosis of autism, um, restrictive imaginative play is a large hallmark of diagnosing it in children. What is your imagination like? And do you believe that that sort of statement about autism applies to you or other people? Well, um, in a certain way it does, because um, I think being able to, you know, um, think creatively and also have this mind that is endless, like a little universe um, in your head is, is great. But I also think that it, it, you know, being able to play with others and I think it's difficult to put yourself into the role or the shoes of someone else, especially as a kid, because you have like no idea how to behave in a social setting. So I guess that is probably one one thing that is, you know, like more restricted with um, kids on the spectrum. Because mm -hmm. you're learning as you get older how to behave. And when you don't know that, you know, like intuitively, I guess it's dif difficult to play in that sort of way. Yeah, and if so, to give to give um, you an example, restricted imaginative play would be something like, <clears throat> okay, right, we're going to play shopkeeper, so I'm going to be a shopkeeper, and you're going to play with me. Whereas non unrestricted imaginative play would be sort of like a fluid transition between games. Ah, uh, okay. So I, I can very vividly remember always wanting to be upfront about what the game is about. Mm -hmm. And I got I used to get very frustrated when it changed in certain ways because oh, yeah. it didn't didn't sort of fit in with the mold that I had. But I think I think definitely in some ways we can be it restricted is a bad word for it. I think it sounds like it's a negative thing and sounds like that, that we have no imagination, which is completely wrong. It's, I think we have to have a little bit of a framework to work from in order to be creative. So like we need a little bit of a, a starter, a little bit of a structure in order to, uh, <laughs> freely move between <laughs> concepts and <laughs> ideas and emotions and all mm. of that kind of stuff. Would you would you agree with that? Do you feel like you need to have something in mind to draw about before you do it, or do you just? <laughs> so, I, 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 is your sentence finished? I'm sorry, I, I'm I'm not sure because I can't see your face. And yeah, that's a that's a tr struggle with podcasts. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, do you feel do you feel like your imagination is like? better than most people's or do you f or not better and but more um I'm trying to think of the right word for it okay better i'm just going to stick with better do you feel like you excel in the imagination department um i don't think so i i mean that would be really weird if i said like yes but i guess where you're going with that question um it really helps me to have you know this um to have a, um, a piece of paper and to be in that piece of paper and not just like draw all over the table, like to be, have endless, like um, endless um, opportunity to express myself. So I really like, you know, that frame that you talked about that really helps to, you know, put yourself into um, one experience of like being creative or uh, doing a role play. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sorry if I understood the question. Um, no, the it's completely fine. I am absolutely fumbling over my words. So just no, 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 no. Um, it's just I don't you know, even know what I, I'm talking about. 
<laughs> Same. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so I guess, you know, when I, what I remember of being a kid, um, I, I, it really helped me to know what we were playing and like to put me, to, to put myself totally in that role and that situation. It wasn't like, let's do this and then now let's do that and just like keep on going. It was like more, uh, the rules have to be this and this and this and yeah. And then you can sort of expand from that, but you can't go against those mm -hmm. rules. I guess so. But as you get older, you realize that there are like social rules and people don't function that way. And um, yeah. Yeah, very good. Thank you. So yeah, going back to the stereotypes on autistic people, I imagine that many people who don't really understand it or have sort of a very limited understanding of autism would think that all autistic people are amazing at maths and computers and logic. And, you know, it's sort of kind of Rain Man type character, you know, I feel like influences that a lot. Do you think that why why do autistic people seem to gravitate towards the creative side as well, where there's so much of a an emphasis on logic and and routine, and it seems to be sort of like two different worlds to most people. Mm -hmm. How would you how would you explain that? Um, so I guess we're just people, and um, as you know, there are people that are really talented at computers and maths and all the other like logical stuff. Um, there are also people that are like really good at naming certain rocks or um, being like really skilled at something else like culinary stuff. And yeah, so I guess we're just people and um, us people on the spectrum um, are just the same as others. We are um, you know, we are talented at, at different things, but you know, with Rain Man and all the other stereotype, I don't blame people because it's just like, you know what you know. And when you hear about something, then you associate, you know, your experiences with mm -hmm. that, which is just like a human thing that we do. But I guess, um, just being on the spectrum, I guess we have this talent of like really putting ourselves into a topic and learning about all like the different aspects of it and you get better and better at this thing it's not just like being really good at you're just like really good at learning about it and like really you know gravitating to that mm -hmm. and you get better and skilled at it so it's more like you don't have these talents ingrained in you it's more that your interest in them allows your interest and your concentration the time that you put into it makes you into the, that person. Well, I guess it's like both. I think maybe there are a lot of people who are, you know, born like really being talented, playing the guitar or another instrument or learning about something. I guess there is like this, how do you say, like this um, biological, like the what your genes yeah, you know, have to yeah. offer, but also what you learn with time I guess I guess it's like both but it's difficult to talk about it because we don't really you know we, we can't like really know like um, a bigger brain doesn't work better than a smaller brain and yeah it's a really like complex thing I guess but I I do believe that you know like being like really hyper focused on a topic is um is a huge part of it hmm I, I do I agree with you I think it is a large part of being good at things on the spectrum. I find it I find it very interesting that you sort of seem to be interested in different topics from different worlds. Like you like your ethics and theology, you like your biology and chemistry, you like your art and imaging and I think you said that you you did you were a social worker as well. So you, you seem to have a lot of different things that you are very interested in and you pursue, but they're not necessarily linked together. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but 
Uh, probably, yeah. I guess like um, I'm sure you you are interested in like different topics that don't really like um, have much to do with um, each other mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, def definitely. Like I uh, my my main creative outlet is writing, so I like creative writing. I've been writing a book for the past three or four months, just as like a thing that I enjoy. I'm trying to keep it as something that I enjoy because I feel like I get the most out of it. I get the most creativity out of it when I'm in the moment. But then, yeah, I also love sport. I love, like, I go, I used to be, used to do Taekwondo. I got quite wow. high up in Taekwondo. Um, I got myself a Commonwealth gold. I went and competed for Britain and stuff like that. Um, and now I'm boxing. <laughs> And then, you know, I also love going, I love the, the job that I do. I love going in and seeing um, kids. I work in a special school, so it's, yeah, philosophy side. And then now and again, I'll do a bit of art as well and YouTubing. Cool. So, yeah, I, I, I like that you have sort of have your, we say, we say we've got a phrase in England, which is um, you have your fingers in many pies. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Pies are good stuff, <laughs> so <laughs> it's a good comparison like that. I think um, one thing that I found with, with autistic people is that our interests can be literally from any direction. Most neurotypicals, not to, to generalize or hurt anyone's feelings, um, tend, to, <laughs> tend, to, <laughs> tend to have like a niche, like they have sort of a general group of things that they're interested in. And that they, they seem to sort of revolve around a certain section of interests, whereas autistic people are just like a kid walking into, you know, like a store with every single thing in it and just picking up random stuff that they like the look of. Hmm. I feel like that's that there is a difference in terms of like interests and stuff. So it's it's a cool cool thing to think about. It's it's always nice as well because you've got no idea what. Um, another person would be interested in if they're autistic you just like they could be interested in rocks or love going to <laughs> museums and they could you know like I don't know doing some blood sports in the backyard or something just randomly um it's a very extreme <laughs> example but <laughs> yeah kind of <laughs> <laughs> he loves he loves singing in nature but he also likes a little bit of blood sport <laughs> <laughs> sounds like an interesting guy <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah like it is it is very very strange that there is that sort of few different things from different worlds and i think our experiences and our interests shape a lot of as, as with anybody shape a lot of who we are and it's not necessarily bound by the way that our brain is um, and how we are born I think there is always an underlying level of logic behind everything we we like to understand things and we like we like to know why 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 we always ask why mm -hmm. and I think that does have some influence on the type of things that most autistic people are interested in but obviously like with yourself and work with some of the other people that I've talked to Sometimes, you know, you're just, you're an odd autistic person. <laughs> so you're not just weird <laughs> from being autistic, but you're weird <laughs> as an autistic person as well, <laughs> which is a great, great yep. place to be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely agree. <laughs> so what, what are the benefits that you've found for yourself? I know we talked a little bit about um, expressing things. But in particular, what are the benefits of you illustrating and drawing experiences that you've had, feelings that you've had, and things that other people have had? Well, for me, um, I really love the aspect of um, you know creating something and then putting it out there for people that they can relate to. Maybe um, I love you know looking at other people's art and then this art does some, something with my emotions. It creates, you know, this like really sp 
interesting experience of um maybe it resonates maybe it's totally is is you know like don't i don't like looking at it because it provokes something inside of me so i like that aspect of being able to share what you know i create and uh, for people to relate to it or not it always creates you know this opportunity to open a discussion and to learn about each other's um, opinions but in general i think it is just really healthy um, and i would love for everyone to find something that puts them in a, in in this like i think people always think of meditation as like sitting somewhere and being like really quiet but just being able to find something that helps you to not have to think about the things that you have to do or what happened in the past just to be present in the moment and enjoy yourself i think it's really healthy to have something like that and i would totally love for everyone to find what they love doing what they love uh, putting their fingers uh, into maybe it's pie or maybe <laughs> it could be some just baked tarts or some angel slices <laughs> i mean you have to shove your fingers quite hard into yeah things, but i can i completely get that i think that's it's a great it's sort of it's very much a meditative type state and it doesn't even have to be something that is you know just has to just doesn't just have to be to do with illustrations it could be anything that you make anything that part of you goes into i think there is something to say about drawing and something to say about writing that does have that meditative kind of feel to it and music and it it has helped me a lot and the more that i've done it the more that i actually want to which is strange for me because i'm very hyperactive and i like to move about a lot and i don't know it's it it puts you in some kind of zen flow like state where you you just you don't feel happy you just feel like content and you just let let your mind just go and it is a a very good like downtime kind of thing a something to do when you've got when you feel so overwhelmed you know you can just pull out your note notepad you can pull up your notes on your your you know, your phone or something and, and type away. It is very cathartic in that way. Mm, yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. It's really cathartic. Do you think that it has specifically um, drawing and illustrating about autism has helped you grow more and helped you learn more about yourself and about other people? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Especially putting it on Instagram where people... Um, have totally different opinions on stuff and phrasing things um, I I always have to think about how to phrase stuff so I mean people always get offended but I don't want to be politi- politically incorrect mm-hmm. uh, so a couple of uh, weeks ago I posted this illustration and I wrote it's totally fine to be anti- anti-social sometimes <laughs> And people, uh, some people were really offended because it meant something totally different. I've just pulled it up. What, yeah. <laughs> and so I had to uh, rewrite <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. And because, <laughs> you know, um, it means something different in, it, it in my does. language. It, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and social is like, screw the law, you know, like, you know, beating people up and not yeah. conforming to society but it makes sense if you put i think if you put like a hyphen between anti and social it might work a bit better but mm-hmm. <laughs> but did people yeah, get I mean... genuinely upset at you for it or is it just no i have to say that the community um that you know is on instagram is like really supportive i do get um the occasional like really hateful message uh, but usually it's a really open discussion and, and people are willing to, you know, learn from each other. And I really like that aspect. It really helps me also to uh, put myself into someone else's thoughts and, um, you know, 
ways of thinking. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> I um, I don't think I, I can't remember. It wasn't it wasn't a set in stone question, so it was just kind of a you know sort of a an info dump, I suppose, um, followed by your info dump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's info dump each other. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like mm-hmm. a horrible thing that you do for someone, isn't it? Just like here, I'm gonna dump all this, you know. <laughs> But you just it just means so well. You want people to know, you know, about stuff, and it's not mm. that, that you have bad intentions. So. Exactly. Do do you, do you find that? Um, I don't feel like people talk enough about what they've learned. Like I I I love it. I love talking to mm. other other people on the spectrum, just as like a general thing, because it it literally is like a little lesson in something that you would never really think of looking into before when you talk to an autistic person i've talked to some even even just like some kids like at the school there's this kid in my class that is amazingly interested in history and he's amazing at it and he you know he draws pictures of it and he's he he tells me about all the like the wars and the political stuff that's happened in places that i never really thought to look into about but yeah, I, I always feel like I learn something new from talking to an autistic person. But, you know, I think that comes from our lack of interest in in sort of small talk. <laughs> we like to get to the meat of it as quick as possible, don't we? Yeah, yeah. let's avoid all the other crap around it. <laughs> Definitely. Let's save some time. Yeah, I think that's awesome. I, I really love that, Thomas. Um. It is, you know, like you, um, you don't spend any time on, you know, like uh, the social norm stuff. You're just getting into the the big questions, and um, I love talking to autistic people. It's just awesome. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 nice because most obviously most of my friends and most people I talk to are um, neurotypical, like the people in my circle, just because you know. Um, us being one one to two percent of all people but you know i i do love i like i like the different styles of communication you know there there is some some times when i'll i'll meet someone one of my friends who's autistic and we're just two minutes in we'll immediately jump into some long discussion and it's great because it's like you have to ease (laughs) neurotypicals into it it's like you can't just go hey what do you think about the meaning of life and all that and the uh, mm-hmm. impending doom that's um, constantly surrounding us and the entropy of the universe slowly degrading. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Maybe not that, to be honest, I wouldn't open with that even with an autistic person. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just as a, a, a very extreme example, once again. <laughs> but yeah, it is it is nice. You sort of, you know, meet one of your autistic friends again and you just sort of, a little switch in your brain clicks and you're like, hey, I don't have to talk how I usually talk around people. I can just talk as an autistic person. Then you mm-hmm. just go into some long rants about stuff. It's great. I love it. We've talked a little bit about autism and the creative arts and, and what you le- what led you into it. Um, how do you recommend others get involved in something creative? How do they start? What do they do? What, what which things do they try? Um, I guess just um, uh, look around you. Look um, what um, you know inspires you. Maybe it's people. Um, it, maybe it's friends, and just um, you know maybe go on YouTube and um, maybe it's something that you've seen in a movie. I guess uh, there are a lot of like sources of um, you know found, finding something that uh, resonates with you, and uh, just be open. Maybe it's something on a sidewalk that you see that inspires you to do something or start something new. Yeah. I guess um, just follow your instinct. What feels right for you? I feel yeah, definitely. Like I feel that the whole thing about creativity is that you can do literally anything by its own definition i know of 
uh, there was a girl, there's a girl, well, a friend that I went to Amsterdam to meet and she, she came onto the podcast just like a couple of months beforehand. And she had this uh, sort of picture up on the wall and it was sort of a collage of feathers that she'd made and she'd made it into a picture. And these were feathers from different birds all over, like in different countries and stuff like that. And she'd made this illustration and she stuck these feathers on in just such an amazing way. And I couldn't help just feel completely envious of that because it's just like, you're sure in, <laughs> in the moment if you, you're out of friends and you're just like, hey, I'm just going to pick up this feather. They'll be like, what are you doing? So, but, <laughs> you know, those those types of things I feel are even more cool. You know, you, you're making something out of nothing, literally, and you're just mm-hmm. letting your creative juice juices flow which is uh is nice what about the you know this the stage where you find something that you you want to do because obviously with everything there's always a little bit of a transitioning period and t- you know time to get to incorporate it into your routine how do you how do you recommend people sort of find that and that not just feel like they're just forcing themselves to do it well, I guess there's, there's always, you know, this stage of where you um, are learning about different techniques, especially in art. Um, and I think it's nice to experiment with that and don't get discouraged because, you know, like I am, I totally suck at some like um, techniques, like, um, for example, oil painting is something that I've never done before. And um, I guess just try out different things and uh, experiment with it and uh, with you know with everything you get better with time and just keep on you know trying and um, trying out new techniques that you see from people that inspire you so yeah and don't too much don't put too much pressure on yourself to to do it because mm-hmm. you, you've got to be in a sort of chilled I want to do this I just want to sit down and splurge my brain out onto a paper piece of paper or into a microphone you got to be in that you definitely have to be in that mood I think as soon as it crosses over into you doing it when you're not in that mood it becomes more of a chore and it feels more like it's work which it shouldn't be I don't think Mm -hmm. so I think yeah having the right mindset or actually wanting to do it is quite important having the right atmosphere maybe it's a coffee shop that you like to go to or Maybe it's, you know, your living room or, you know, maybe even your garden, you just sit outside and you put some nice music on, you just chill out and you have your book there. You know, maybe you might not write anything, but you might suddenly have a a surge of inspiration and feel like you want to jot some stuff down. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a good way to ease yourself into it. You don't want to be too forceful. Yeah, and, and if there's a time where you're totally not inspired, that's fine too. Just, um, as you said, jo- just go in, in the garden or just sit in a coffee shop and look a- around you, perceive the world around you, and maybe something will spark something inside of you and uh, creative juices are going to flow again. <laughs> so, yeah, don't force yourself. I think that's a big, big um, tip. So we've we've talked through most of the the questions already. Like we're nearly at the tail end of the podcast. Shall we sort of do a little bit of a three point summary on the things that we talked about? What three things that you've mentioned or that we've mentioned do you think are the most important to take away from the podcast? So I think. Um... One of the things that really inspired me um, is that you said it's just like do what like really feels right for you. I mean, you're creating this podcast to share like the experience of other people around the world um, and like em- really like embracing the message that just be yourself. You don't have to prove yourself to others especially being on the spectrum sometimes we tend to do that just because people like perceive you as like a neurotypical person um you don't have to prove that you're 
on the spectrum. You don't have to prove yourself. You're here on this planet to experience life to the fullest. So just do that. Cool. And a second one? A second one. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good. It's going to be it's... hard to top that one. <laughs> um, so I think it's really cool to ask questions. Like we love to um, ask questions ourselves um, about different topics and about the thoughts and feelings of others to like really get, you know, what they think about a certain topic. So I think mm -hmm. it's great for people to ask what it's like for us to be autistic and not just like have these speculations and stereotypes. Just ask away. Questions are cool, man. So yeah, I think that's another thing that I would really encourage people to. We love questions. Mm. We like we like very structured questions to the point. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever want, yeah, if you ever want to, you know, start a little conversation with an autistic person, just ask them questions and then just quick fire questions at them. They'll love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think ev everyone is um, keen on being like, you know. When people are interested in, in, you know, you and your thoughts and feelings, you're pretty much in a good position to ask away because they feel like you are not just like here to interact with them because you have to, I mean, you're just like in, really interested in, in them. And that's a really cool thing to experience in a conversation. Shall we, um, shall we go for a third one? Oh, now it's getting difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Tensions are rising. <laughs> Brain is is active at hundred percent, looking for <laughs> memories, um, compiling, yeah. computing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think just um, just be uh, just find something that really really makes you happy, and I really loved the the way that you described writing, um, and how you like really enjoy um, sitting down with a notebook and a and a pencil and just writing away find something or maybe you already have it in your life that really makes you forget everything around you and embrace that just try out different techniques and maybe learn about um, how others do it and you find your own way to um, you know maybe it's it's art maybe it's writing maybe it's um, sports or something else I would really encourage people to just uh, follow follow their heart. Oh man, that sounds so cheesy. Follow your heart. Oh, I, I totally follow take it feelings. back. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I experience guess... the emotion. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's cool to experience something. Mm -hmm. Really, yeah. I think it's definitely um, hard for for many people on the spectrum to follow the heart. <laughs> it needs to go so? through the brain it needs to go through the brain first are you sure are you sure <laughs> well i i'm not sure, so sure about that definitely for me mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> I, I i feel things but i need to critically analyze them in long paragraphs in order to fully understand what i'm feeling <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> i get you <laughs> <laughs> but yeah cool awesome those are some three really good points to take away and now comes to the last question of the podcast, podcast, podcast. What does autism mean to you personally? Autism means being and thinking um, differently, being open to um, everything around you, just like really being open to experiences, opinions, but also um, really being interested in uh, learning and asking. And I think it's really cool to be on the spectrum. Yeah, and it means so much to me to be part of um, an amazing community of people who are just like absolutely brilliant and so cool to hang out and talk to. Brilliant. Like you, Thomas. Hooray! Thank you so much. <laughs> Hooray! I very much enjoy the uh, verbal affirmations. So it's a, it's a it's a soft spot for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me on this amazing podcast. It was really a pleasure. Brilliant. So let's give out a few little um, links. Um, 
do you want to share some of your social media pages, uh, your YouTube and your Instagram and your website and Etsy store and all of that stuff? Yeah, sure. Um, so if you want to see, you know, like some crazy weird stuff and um, on the interwebs, you can follow me on Etsy or Instagram, but also YouTube and all like pretty much the other um, social media um, under Super Spectrum Girl. I'm creating illustrations, but also like travel vlogs and um, videos about what it's like to travel as an autistic um, person and other stuff like mental health topics and stuff like that. And I would really love to chat with you guys. So thank you, Thomas, for this opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. And I will stick all of that down in the description as usual. You know, so if you, if you just want to scroll down, maybe take a little look at the, uh, the little, um, little things I've wrote. Have a have a click of those links, and um, you'll be able to uh, view some of Super Spectrum Girls' amazing art. And um, I think I did say recently that I would love to have one of your t-shirts. I need to get one of your t-shirts. I will definitely so, wear it in a future video on YouTube. You just have to send me your size, and I'm gonna hook you up with one. And what you know, like what uh, design that you want brilliant that would be so cool <laughs> that'll be so cool i'm gonna have some autism related merch in my videos now very cool Wee. if you want to find out more about what i do uh, i know it's very egocentrical of me but um no absolutely not. um <laughs> that's an important thing it is it is you can find me on youtube asperger's growth Type in, I've got some videos on autism, mental health. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Asperger's Growth. And of course, the 40 Oti podcast, which is available on Apple Podcasts and for, I was going to say 40 Oti podcasts, Apple Podcasts <laughs> and Spotify podcasts. Thank you so much for joining us today and listening to us talk about autism. And, you know, I, I love to be able to have these little conversations. It's, it's, it is more of a, a pleasure of mine. I enjoy it thoroughly coming on here and chatting to cool people like yourself, Ina. <laughs> Thank you. I really like, I'm really honored. <laughs> But um, I don't consider myself cool. But thank you. Same, thank you so much, Thomas. <laughs> it was awesome chatting to you. Like, really. <laughs> Brilliant. Did you enjoy Most it? Of, yeah, absolutely. It was so interesting. Thank you so much. Well, we'll have to do something more in the future. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And um, if you want to give me any ideas of what to do a next podcast on, maybe you want to be on yourself, you have an interesting story, you can always contact me at, I was going to say at Asperger's Grove again. It's a running theme in this podcast. Asperdisgrowth at gmail.com. Shoot me an email. We can always have a chat about something. Thank you very much for watching. Watching, listening, rather. And I will see you again in two weeks for the second, well, not the second episode. I'm already going off the rails. My brain knows that we're finishing soon for the next podcast. See you later, peeps. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I never know how to end these podcasts, but, you know, as I said before, that's, um, that's how I end them, by questioning my lack of end sequence. It's a very interesting, uh, weird thing. Why am I still doing it? Bye. <laughs> <laughs>